From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Wildfires in Montana claim homes near Polson and threaten more homes southwest of Butte. Coming up, see some dramatic video of firefighters saving a home near Wise River. I talked to two firefighters working tirelessly on the Boulder 2700 fire near Finley Point. Well, it's just ahead of 6.30 on this uh, Tuesday. Chet Lehman, and Matt Elwell with you here. The it, it's hard to tell what that is. I mean, it's clouds. We know it's clouds. Well, it's a little clouds. fog, a little smoke, a uh, lot of something. There, there's a little bit of fog. There's definitely some clouds, and I've been watching the uh, air quality get worse yeah. across the area. We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's just getting orangey. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> luckily the sun is being blocked by the um, cloud cover, which yeah. is, I don't know whether it's luck, but, you know. Keeps it cooler. It does keep it cooler, yeah. and that's what I'm hanging my hat on right now. <laughs> right now, low 60s in Belgrade, 51 in Butte. A few passing clouds still in our skies as the rain continues to march out of here. I think we're done with rain. The smoke, I don't think we're quite as done with. Temperature should be into the mid 80s for the afternoon today. Uh, Butte, uh, much on that same page. I think low to mid 80s does look like it's going to be breezy. We'll talk more about your forecast from the weather patio in just a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to be doom and gloom, but you remember that blocking out the sun for a long period of time is what killed the dinosaurs. I just throw that out there, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. <coughs> 631 now. Uh, National Fire Information Center says there are 23 major wildfires in Montana right now and says there is significant wildfire outlook for the state through September. Butte resident says the Christensen wildfire burning southwest of Wise River came within feet of his family home. That fire has grown to nearly 8,000 acres, threatened the homestead of John Lovell, who offered some video and personal photos of the fire from this weekend. He says he was grateful to the firefighters who defended the property as the flames drew near. And then the memories you have of the surrounding areas, I mean, the different spots you go with the, your, your young son here and your young son there and your daughter and, you know, you hiked over this hill and you fished this creek and, and um, different landmarks that have been in the family for years. When you see them all, all dissipating with the fire, it makes it pretty, pretty disheartening. I'm sure that's true. This fire would uh, could merge with the Alder Creek fire burning about seven miles west of Wise River. That one's at more than 10,000 acres. Currently, it's also just 10% contained. Alder Creek fire again west of Wise River. Cause has not been determined for that one. For more than 300 people are currently fighting that blaze. Meantime, not too far away, Trail Creek fire west of Wisdom has burned more than 35,000 acres. Scattered rain did fall on that area on Sunday. Fire managers say it made firefighting hazardous and actually slowed down work. And near Hoodoo Pass outside Ennis, the Goose Fire holding at more than 7,500 acres. Containment there stands at 80%. Go Fire northeast of Phillipsburg had some help from more firefighting resources arriving and from the weather. The area around the Go Fire is under a closure order. That fire has burned 212 acres, 0% contained there as well. Well, Montana's early fire season keeping wildland firefighters constantly busy. MTN's John Riley gives us a look at where the state is in the fire season so far and where resources currently sit. So far this year, Montana has seen more than 400 wildland fires burning more than 219,000 acres across the state. Montana DNRC says the unusually early fire season has been rough with new significant fire starts reported almost daily. We've been fighting fire pretty heavily in the northern Rockies and across Montana for the last six or seven weeks. Generally, we don't get into that busy of a season till now. So we're already, you know, six weeks ahead of schedule on people being tired, being fatigued and just worn out and, and the public probably getting tired of it as well, seeing this smoke every day. Montana entered the fiscal year with a fire suppression fund at its statutory maximum of roughly $105 million. Since July 1st, the beginning of the state's fiscal year, Montana has spent $19.4 million in fire suppression costs, ranging from boots on the ground to large air tankers. Although the state has the money to cover costs, there are requests that have gone unfilled, while agencies and teams prioritize sending resources where they're needed most. Their primary goal, as always, to keep people safe. Um, we're having such a such rapid fire growth. Um, keeping people safe is a high concern, whether that's getting public out of the way of these rapidly moving fires or, you know, just keeping our firefighters are out on the ground, keeping them safe in safe places to fight fire. 
DNRCS says the hope is that they'll be able to catch their breath this week thanks to some predicted cool and rainy weather. However, it's only the beginning of August, and there's still a lot more fire season left in Montana. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Sadly, you are right there, John. There is still far more fire season to go. But Houston, by the way, says the best way people can help Montana firefighters right now, be extra careful to not start fires and report any fires that you see. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte launching a new dashboard to help keep Montanans informed on all the active fires burning in the state. The new dashboard can be found at mtfireinfo.org. Right now in Montana, 13 new fire starts just within the last 24 hours. Speaking of evacuations, road closures remain in place around the Boulder 2700 fire. That one's burning east of Polson. Fire is along Highway 35 near the Finley Point area. So far, it's burned just over 1100 acres and is 0% contained. Now, in MTN's initial reporting, authorities told us that structures in the teens were damaged by that fire. It exploded Saturday night when extreme wind shifts and high temperatures pushed that fire to spread past containment lines and into homes along Highway 35. Now, to ensure public and firefighter safety, Highway 35 is closed in both directions from Polson at the Highway 9335 junction to Blue Bay, which is mile marker 15. Polson, by the way, just hosted the Cherry Festival this past weekend. I talked to two firefighters working tirelessly on the Boulder 2700 fire near Finley Point. As far as the fire the last few days, it's an extraordinarily hot fire. We've got a lot of dead fall on the ground and, and uh, it's not helping the situation that this hillside hasn't burned in a long time. Finley Point Yellow Bay Fire Department Lieutenant Bryce Mensch says firefighters worked around the clock to protect as many homes as possible early Sunday morning when high winds flared the Boulder 2700 fire out of control. Mensch says cooler temperatures and moisture Sunday night into Monday have helped firefighters protect homes. We've got our hands around it. Structures at this moment are in a safer condition than they have been in the last few days. So um, I'm confident that this weather today is helping things and uh, we're doing the best we can at this point. Finley Point Yellow Bay Fire Chief Brent Berlin says the hillside on fire near Finley Point hasn't burned in close to 100 years. He's worried tomorrow's predicted dry and warmer temperatures will flare conditions right back up. Right now it seems calm and, and cool, but uh, I think tomorrow is going to be another story. Berlin says fighting this wildfire brings extreme challenges due to the steep, rugged terrain of the Mission Mountains. Right now you still got trees standing, a lot of underbrush is burned and, and is still smoldering. But again, you know, those thousand aisle fuels, they're still, some of it's still standing in, and burning as we speak. And when it gets hot again, it's going to just light back up. He says his fire department will now be assisting the Northern Rockies instant management team with anything they need. We're going to stage um, equipment for them to access whenever needed. Mench asked Finley Point residents to be patient and understanding as firefighters work to contain the fire and lift evacuations. I know it's frustrating. I know it's scary. Right now it is under control as far as the homes are concerned, but as far as getting back for pets and clothing, at this point we just ask for everyone's understanding we're doing the best we can and hopefully this will get cleaned up. In Polson, Sean Wells, MTN News. And we'll continue to update you on the fire situation in Montana. Meantime, in other headlines, two large trucks collided on Interstate 90 at the Logan exit just before noon yesterday, closing the interstate for a time. In spite of the heavy damage caused to an MDT truck and a large amount of debris, no other vehicles were involved. Neither driver was injured. MDT troopers uh, tell uh, MTN that a wind gust pushed the MDT trailer, which was carrying a front end loader, into the rear unit of a three trailer FedEx semi. That sent the MDT truck spinning out of control. The trailer it was pulling then flipped over, leaving the front end loader overturned in the westbound passing lane. Dump truck crossed the median and stopped off the shoulder of the eastbound lanes. FedEx semi dragged to its topple trailer across the Logan overpass before coming to stop just west of the bridge. Traffic routed off the interstate onto the Logan exit, then back onto the interstate for several hours. Well, mild or severe, you can get long haul COVID symptoms even if you've been fully vaccinated. And the road to recovery is muddy. Newsy's Lindsay Thies spoke with one man dealing with just that. You know, today I feel good, and that's, that's a blessing because it's not like that every day. Life is much different now for 37-year-old Daniel Richard of Aurora, Colorado. Even though he was fully vaccinated in April, he's among the more than 5,600 cases of breakthrough COVID that's led to hospitalization. I've been having a hard time breathing on my own while I sleep, so they've migrated me to the COVID ward. Two young doctors 
came into the ER room. They were wearing yellow, uh, yellow hazmat suits with full face respirators with the forced oxygen filters on the back. Um, they came in and they said, we're going to admit you to the COVID ICU. And we have a, we have a, we have two questions for you. Um, do you consent to us keeping you alive under any means necessary? And do you know what that means? He says he knew what it meant. He's overweight. He had a family history of blood clots, which for him started after the COVID infection. While he survived the ICU, he's not fully recovered. Daniel's now dealing with long haul COVID symptoms. I get about like four to six hours of like good lucid energy. And then I just want to go to bed. I started feeling tight in my chest. Um, burning sensations started to happen all over my body. Um, uh, I'm, uh, neurological issues. Someone who's been vaccinated, someone who's been hospitalized, and then, you know, on top of all of that, gets out of the hospital, but is dealing with long haul COVID symptoms. That trifecta, how common is something like that? Pretty uncommon to rare. So we know looking at who's been hospitalized, they fit that pattern. Most of them do have some underlying condition that's predisposed them to maybe already have uh, a higher potential risk from COVID and then also less likely to respond fully to the vaccine. With the COVID long syndrome, I think we're still learning a lot about that, and it doesn't always associate with severity of disease. The CDC says a third of COVID-19 cases may lead to long haul symptoms, those that last at least a month post infection. That's about 11 million Americans facing illness for months or years. It's unclear right now how many of those breakthrough cases are also long haulers. As for Daniel, he says he still would have gotten the vaccine, crediting it for keeping him alive. Come on, bring it back. Come on, bring it back. But as he deals with countless medical bills and of course, long lasting symptoms, he's trying to remain resilient. I'm a pretty affable, optimistic guy, but this has really um, Come on. punched Come on. a hole through some of that. Lindsay Thies, Newsy, Denver. 641. We're going to take a break. When we come back, sales figures show minivans are making a comeback. Coming up, learn why more motorists are turning to minivans and away from SUVs. But first, let's check in with the folks at CBS this morning to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning to you. Ahead on CBS this morning, Simone Biles returns to Olympic competition on the balance beam. Plus, swimming superstar Caleb Dressel joins us at the table with his full five gold medals from Tokyo. And we're in Cape Canaveral this morning where Boeing hopes to prove its new spaceship can safely fly to and from the International Space Station. We'll show you why the stakes are so high and get a first look at the new comic book that civil rights icon, that's John Lewis, helped to write. How the book is being used to inspire young people about the fight for equality. We'll see you 7 o'clock straight up.